Okay, we're back with Angular Momentum Part 2. Okay, so I um, wanted to show, I was showing you other times when mo Angular Momentum is conserved. And so it's whenever there is no net torque on the system. So imagine that you have this uh, horizontal platform with a hole in it and a string comes um, through the hole and attaches to a puck. Now this is a frictionless table. And so the puck's going to whirl around here in a circle. Uh, because it's tethered by this string and you're gonna as it's whirling around in a circle you're gonna pull the string inward and when and when you when you pull the string shortening the radius um, this thing is actually gonna go faster it's gonna go a lot faster as you do that so this will be going around and you pull on this and as it comes in it will start to rotate a lot faster now first of all why will net torque be conserved or excuse me, why will the net torque be equal to zero? Well, that's because the, the force that you're going to put on the puck is this way. So that's the force of the puck. That's the force on the puck. And um, the radius is this way. Of the, the R is this way. So how much of the force is perpendicular to R? The answer is none of it. None of the force is perpendicular to R. So the net torque is equal to zero. So we can say that um, L equals L prime. So the I at first times the speed it was spinning at first is equal to the I afterwards times the omega afterwards. Okay, well the I before is going to be um, M times let's say R1 squared. That's the I, whenever you have just a point mass outside of a uh, rotating around an axis. And omega, uh, we'll just leave it as omega. That will equal um, the same M, didn't change its M, but um, the second radius might be R2 squared times omega prime. So that's how you do something like that. Hey, you did work on this system, though, because when you pulled in on this, there was you actually were, were doing some work on the system. And so the work that you do will be the change in kinetic energy. Expect the kinetic energy to get greater when you do this. When you pull on that, you're taking some of your energy and you're putting it into the kinetic energy of the puck. Okay, uh, this, this next case, I'd like you to consider two skaters. We're looking down at an ice rink. And here comes skater one. He's, he's just um, skating like this, this way. And here's skater two. And um, she's skating like this, this way. So there they are. They're skating along like this. And they do that a few times. But then they realize that, um, that they would like to, um, as they skate by, they would like to get to know one another. And so they, as they escape by, they grab each other's hands. And what will happen when they grab each other's hands is they'll actually spin around. Can you imagine that? So when they, when they um, go and grab each other's hands, I'll just draw their two heads and their arms because now they're holding arms. They're actually going to spin around like that. Well, you know, that's angular momentum. They have some I times omega. Well, if they had I omega then, they had, a, they had some angular momentum before also. So I need to tell you um, one other kind of curious thing about angular momentum, and that is it's all relative to whatever axis you're talking about. So if I have um, a particle of mass m, If I have a particle of mass m moving along here um, with the speed v, mass m, and um, if I wanted to know the angular, we know this has momentum, but did you know it has angular momentum relative to some axis? Let's say that axis, if that's the axis, make that bigger so you can see it. This has some angular momentum relative to that axis. And the angular momentum it has is um, R cross P. 
that would be uh, if this is r r is the distance from the axis to the particle so uh, that's r cross p now p is the momentum vector it's that way uh, so as this moves along, uh, it's got some angular momentum. It turns out that if you wanted to, rather than find the part of B that's perpendicular to R, we could find the part of R that's perpendicular to V, kind of like the line of action. That would be, uh, the, this would be the R we'd want to use. So this could just be um, R perpendicular times MV. That's, that's how you could find that out. And um, notice that there's no net torque on the system. Let's just say that there's, uh, this is happening out in space. There's no forces on this. So here's the axis. So the angular momentum shouldn't change since there's no net torque. So sometimes a question will ask you for the angular momentum of this situation. And you might just recognize that it doesn't ever change. So it's a little easier to find it when it's over here. When it's here going the same V, the angular momentum would just be MV times R, that R. See, MV times that R. Okay, now when would you use this in a problem? Let's say you um, had a door that was on a hinge. So there's a door on a hinge. And um, this is, we're looking down at this door. The, the gravity is downward right now. And here comes the clay. Here comes a piece of clay. It's got a mass M and a speed V. And it's going to collide with the center of the door. And the two are going to stick and the, they're going to go off and swing the door open. Well, uh, there's an axis right here. And that's putting a net force on this system. So you can't say P equals P prime because the axis is connected to the ground and that's putting a net force on the system. But you can say that the net torque is equal to zero. And so uh, if the net torque is equal to zero, I'm going to say L equals L prime. And uh, the L before the collision is just, the door doesn't have any L. It's got some, some rotational inertia, but it's omega is zero doesn't have any angular speed. So this is the only thing that has some angular uh, momentum. And so that's going to be, um, if, if it's going to hit at L over 2, let's say this whole thing is L. Well, I'll say this is a meter stick, not a door, but a meter stick. Okay. And um, let's say that this whole thing is, a, is, a one, is just L. Okay. So then I would say to figure out the L before, it's going to be, um, R cross P is equal to um, L after, I'll detail L after in a second. Now R cross P is just going to be um, L over 2 times M times V since uh, this momentum is perpendicular to L over 2. This would be your R. Okay, so that's L over 2 MV is equal to, now one they, one, once they collide, let's treat this just as though it were um, part of the door or the meter stick. So it would be the mass of the clay times how far it is away squared. So that's the eye of the clay. This is the clay times omega prime plus the meter stick. Now if that's a meter stick, then that's one third ml squared that's the i of a meter stick times omega prime well these two are the same they rotate with the same angular velocity and so now you can solve for that and that's how you solve an angular momentum problem all right that's all i got for you i'll see you monday